this video is about how to find the equation of a tangent plane for a, a multivariable function. But before we understand that, we've got to make sure we understand how to find the equation of a tangent line from Calc 1. And so let's start with a function that's defined explicitly. Y is a function of f of x. There's a graph of it. We're interested in a tangent line at a particular point. Um, x naught is going to be the x value of the point. You plug that in, you get f of x naught, who is the y naught. So that points on the curve. And then we're interested in the tangent line that goes through that point and uh, is tangent to the function. If you learn nothing else in Calc 1, you learn that the slope of that tangent line is the derivative evaluated at that x naught. And so your job would be to find the equation of that line. You know its slope you know a point that it goes to, you can use point slope formula. Remember y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it would be y minus y naught equals f prime at x naught times x minus x naught because that's what your m is, f prime at x naught. This is your point slope form, okay? But in practice, or maybe if you're more familiar with, instead what you used was uh, slope intercept form. And so you have your m, you take your x naught and your y naught, you plug them in as your x and y, four variables there, but only one really defined, the b. And so that's how you practically did it. And so you plug in f prime of x naught as your m, x equals x naught and y equals y naught, and you solve for b. That's how you really did it. So now, to so make sure we understand, you know, tangent planes, what we do is we take this and we make it 3D. Imagine this thing coming out of the screen. So that curve coming out of the screen makes a surface. That line coming out of the screen makes a plane. Now we're interested in finding the equation of that plane. Let's take a look at on the next slide. Well, any plane whatsoever, there's two things that define the plane. There are the, uh, there's a point that's on the plane and the normal vector that is orthogonal to every vector that's in the plane. And then what you do with these guys is you can throw them into this formula. This is kind of like a point slope formula. You take your a, b, and c from the normal vector, your x naught, y naught, z naught from the point, and you plug it into this. And this is a form of the equation of the plane. Now let's start um, manipulating this a little bit, juggling it around. Let's, uh, with the golden mine of, of solving for uh, z minus z naught. Let's uh, move the, uh, the c term over to the other side by subtracting it. And then let's divide everything by negative c. And so this is analogous to what we had in 2D. We have um, z minus z naught equals to something times x minus x naught, and now something else times y minus y naught. But having the a over negative c is a little awkward, so what we're going to do is rename them. We're going to call the a over negative c capital A, the b over negative c capital B. And so this is the form of the equation for any plane. Okay. And then more specifically, what we're going to do is focus on what, what if this is the tangent plane to a function at a particular point where the x naught, y naught, z naught is the point of tangency. Um, our job is to figure out well, what is this capital A and capital B in that format. Let's take a look at that on the next slide. You see A and B, they can take on very special values and we're going to prove it on the next slide. All right, so uh, what we have here is the blue is the surface. We have the uh, equation of any plane that's, that's uh, up there on the left. And what we're going to do is make a slice. We're going to slice this uh, at, at y equals y naught. That's a plane. Uh, y naught units removed away from the xz plane. And what happens is you get that curve C1. That curve is called the trace of the surface. It's where the surface intersects that plane y equals y naught. Now, the line that's there, T1, is tangent to the curve. And at the same time, it lives in the tangent plane. The tangent plane is the yellow uh, parallel, parallelogram looking shape there. And so um, we have our surface, and then we have the tangent plane. And this curve here is on the surface. This tangent line, T1, is um, tangent to the curve and in the tangent plane at the same time. Um, the, the point y um, equals y naught, that's on the tangent line. 
it's on the tangent plane. Okay. And so if we take the equation, the generic equation there up in the left corner uh, at the top of the, the top of the page there, and we plug in y equals y naught, we'll end up being able to find the equation of that tangent line. At y equals y naught, the whole term for b goes away, and we have something that looks very similar to what we had on the last slide. Um, instead, of, instead of being in terms of y and x in terms of z and x. It says that z minus z naught is capital A times x minus x naught. Okay. All right, great. And so we know that T1 is a line and in that format, the, the capital A would be the slope of that line. And so how can we find that? Well, T1, the line there, its slope represents the rate of change of the function, the multivariable function, in the direction parallel to the x-axis. Uh, when you slice with a plane where y is constant, you're looking at how, uh, seeing how things change in terms of x being the, the variable that's changing. And so um, earlier we had said that, uh, that what that would do for you is, um, that's like standing on the surface and stepping in the direction of the i vector when we're talking about direction of derivatives. Um, stepping in the direction of the i vector, one along the x-axis, you can find out how the, how the surface is changing. And when we learn partial derivatives, what we learn is this is exactly the x partial derivative evaluated at that point. Say all that to say that capital A is your x partial. Okay, we can redo this whole thing by slicing with the plane x equals x naught, getting curve C2, getting tangent line T2, plugging it in and figuring out that capital B will be left over it because capital A will be gone at that point. And we'll find that capital B would be the y partial evaluated at x naught. So that's great. These things are very special. And so now we know we can plug them in. And this looks very familiar. It looks like the three-dimensional version of our 2D that we had on the last slide. Tangent line, now we have a tangent plane. It's not the standard way to do it, but it works and it gives you the equation. When z is defined explicitly as a function of x and y. Well, how do you practically do it? Just like back in 2D, that's not really what we do. We have in our hands the, the um, x partial and the y partial. We have z naught. We just plug all these things in. And the normal, um, the standard form of an equation of a, a plane is ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. That's like our, you know, y equals mx plus b. Um, so we move away from that point slope form. We enter, this is sort of like a slope intercept form. Uh, we know the values of uh, a, and B, um, if, if, to, if we're going to take what's in the box and transform it into this format, then that means we have to set it equal to zero. So we take this Z minus Z naught and we push it over to the other side by subtracting the, the quantity. So then what would be the coefficient on Z minus Z naught or what would be the coefficient on Z? It would be a, a negative one when you move it over. And so we have seven different variables here. We know six of them. Uh, we know A, that's the X partial, evaluated at our tangent point. We know B, that's the Y partial, evaluated at our tangent point. And of course, the X and the Y and the Z are X naught, Y naught, and Z naught. And we just figured out by, by moving over the Z minus Z naught term, we, we figured out that the coefficient on Z is a negative one. Okay. All right, great. We have everything we need. And that's how we're going to actually find the equation of tangent plane. Um, in the next video, what we'll do is uh, I'll do one each way. I'll do an example where uh, we do it kind of like in a point slope form, and then I'll do an example where I do it in the standard form. And you choose whichever way you like, but um, not to make this video too long, I'll go ahead and end it here, and then I'll put a link that goes to the uh, next video in the description. Okay. All right, great. So thanks for watching. Um,
like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time. Leave a comment down below.